Today we are going to do something completely different. We are going to do an intuitive painting. So the last four weeks we've been doing paintings where we've been coming up with the composition ahead of time, trying to decide a mood and a, and the color palette for that and the value pattern. So we've planned, we've made a lot of decisions ahead of time. This time it's going to be more intuitive and playful where we are just going to pick one intention and then we're just going to paint. We're going to paint. So some of those things that we could do, some of the things that or ideas or where I get inspiration when I'm creating art in this way because you don't want to come to a blank page and you don't want to have no, you don't want it. You want to have limits. So I can either go back to my prompt cards and I can look and see what I wrote on the backs of these cards and see if anything pops out that I want to do or even if anything looks interesting to me from this side, from the visual side, if there's things that I want to recreate. Okay, so for example, I saw this oil pastels and I thought this card's really boring. I want to color it with oil pastels. So uh, even if I just get into, into my materials by playing on this card where it's safe, that's a good start. Anything that inspires movement and action. Once you find something that inspires movement and action, then you should do it. Just go into it. Don't overthink this. All you're trying to do is get the materials out, get the creative juices flowing. So one way that I do that is the prompt cards. I have mood cards, um, composition cards. So you're noticing a trend maybe with all of the cards. <laughs> um, so here's some composition cards that I have made up. For example, we've talked about this one, but using a grid composition might be the start of a painting that I have. Or using a symmetrical composition. So I have some ideas of that. I also have some cards that have the elements of art on them. So if I wanted to just draw a card and it says shape on it, so focusing on shape. Or even action cards that have an action word, tear. That could be the start. I usually go through the cards rather than draw the cards because I, I want to fill a draw to action. So like, oh, I want to, I, want to color this card with past oil pastels is a draw to action. Uh, sometimes I'll try and draw them out randomly and I'm just not, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not, I just don't want to do what's on that card. And so it has to pull me, it has to be a spark of creativity. It has to make me want to do something. Uh, you can also go through and start with just a color palette or which might be starting with three colors or two colors and black and white. Another thing that I do frequently is look through my sketchbooks and see what feels interesting to me. And immediately I saw this lines that show mood and that feels interesting to me. Once you find something, one thing that feels interesting to you, then 
start. Do that thing. I started playing with the oil pastels and that may or may not continue onto my page here or it or it might just spark another idea of something that I want to figure out. So playing with the oil pastels led me to want to play with translucency and opacity. So I think that's what I'm going to do today is just play with materials that are transparent and materials that are opaque. A lot of people are afraid of the blank page and one of the best ways to overcome that is to just do a scribble on it. You can always paint over the top of that. Now, as I'm working and I'm thinking about transparency and opacity, so this is semi-transparent because I can still see a little bit of the line poking through, but then I just come pop into head, my head and I think I like the, this is creating a barrier with my tape. And so now I just feel compelled to go all the way around the edge. And then if I get bored, then I can change it up. My sister was telling me the other day that starting things, we feel an inherent stress or fear of starting things. So starting is the hardest part. And once we begin, you just have to begin, you have to feel the discomfort, but the sooner that you begin, it's like ripping off the band-aid. It's going to get you into the work faster. So you'll feel, you'll notice an immediate calming effect by just beginning. It's also a good idea to come to the table with an idea.
And then all of a sudden I think, I wonder if I can fill this pattern up with a darker color. I wonder if watercolor would show up. Some other things I've done in the past is I've limited my picture to a certain number of marks, so maybe like 21 marks on the page, which I'm actually feeling like that would be great here because I like this white space. I'm not minding having this. I did forget that I outlined it though, which might be a little weird. I don't know. It could be fun though. Usually I want to fill up the page with color and then I turn it and I fill it up with more color and I just keep on layering. Especially with playing with transparency and opacity like I am. But I am liking the simplicity and I don't want to lose that. And because it's not the general way that I work, it is feeling attractive to me. So I feel like once I add a little pattern here, I might be done with this piece, which I'm really surprised about. It feels, it feels pretty complete to me. So <laughs> that was a really short picture. I am still going to stay in the art room and I don't feel like I'm done painting today, but That's the amazing thing about the game is that you leave the door open for possibility and for surprises. And it's fun to play. It could create a whole new look for you. You could turn in a whole different direction, a different style from taking the time to play, to have fun. One of the most important aspects that I feel of doing this also is to learn from it. So don't forget to write in your journal or on a prompt card the discoveries that you make. So I am, after doing this, I am going to do minimalism because that's what felt surprising to me. That's not what I was going for. I was playing with the texture or I mean I was playing with the I was playing with the translucent mediums 
really what I was trying to do was trying to make the mediums more opaque. I was trying to see how to make the mediums opaque. That was kind of the game that I was playing. I didn't realize I was doing that, but because now I'm sitting here reflecting, that is exactly what I was doing. Because I knew that this green, it, I, I've used it so much before that I knew that it was a very translucent acrylic paint. And so I try, I was trying to get it to cover this. As it's drying, it's becoming more and more translucent. So I'm curious to see if this will stay in a really good cover or not. As this dried, the blue popped right through. I was also trying to get this blue to be as opaque as possible. I knew there wasn't a lot of hope because it is watercolor and watercolor by its very nature is generally pretty translucent unless you get into the um, ochre colors, the ochre. My goal was to m make the medium opaque, but what ended up happening was I was enjoying the minimalism. I did like make 12 marks. Or you can do minimalism by restricting the colors that are used. There's a lot of ways you could do minimalism. That that also sounds very interesting to me is to get out only maybe like 10 supplies and clear the rest of the area and work with that. So after doing this, I might tape another piece of paper on and continue that play because do I feel like I discovered everything I could about making this opaque or translucent? I. I don't feel like I discovered everything there. So, but I feel like this piece is done. So, go play, come up with some ideas, look through your prompt cards and your, and your sketchbooks. And once you feel inspired to, to take action, do it. Just jump in. And I promise that it's natural to have anxiety, to feel anxious when you see a blank page. So the sooner that you can get started, the sooner that you can make it so it's not a blank page anymore and you can start responding to the marks that you make, then the sooner that that, that anxiety or fear will subside and Play will, play will be at the forefront. I hope you have fun and we'll see you next week. Another thing that I wanted to add to what I already said is something else that will help with your process is to kind of come into the studio with a ritual. Now, I can't do this when I'm filming because all of the music that I listen to has a copyright on it. But if I'm working alone and I don't have a camera rolling, one of the best ways for me to get into the studio and calm down too is to play music that I like. Make your studio a place or make your creative space, whatever, wherever that is, a place where you want to be, where you're comfortable and where you enjoy do what do what feels good what will get you to want to stay if you're in a room that is really cold and uncomfortable you're not going to want to be in there so think about those things think about the environment that you are creating in make things enjoyable I didn't like this card. It wasn't attractive. It didn't make me want to look at it. <laughs> so, 
So another thing that I noticed, these two colors were just sitting next to each other and I thought, those colors do not belong together. So I had to put them together. Combination. Now I am actually playing with their translucency because this one's more opaque and this one's more translucent. So I wanted to put that one on top of that one, but then I wanted to put this one back on top of that one. One of my favorite things to do with intuitive painting also is rather than come with an intention, I will just start putting lots of layers on the page, which I think we've done a lot of videos of. And then I will try to find pictures in the page. Let me show you an example of that. So it amazes me because as I'm sitting here working, ideas are coming to my mind. And I had already finished this video when I thought that's really useful information that I would like to point out. <laughs> so it's amazing how if you just begin, ideas will flow and it will get easier. I don't know if it ever gets easier to come into the studio, but I think it does get easier in the fact that it's, it's kind of like running. <laughs> running is really never enjoyable, but once, once you start, once you start running, it gets, you get into it. This is kind of a new thing for me. Um, but I've been liking to make creatures out of my cards, so I will scribble. These are not, okay, that one's a better one, kind of. Um, so I'll start doing patterns and shapes and lines, and then I'll look and see if I see any forms. And so in this one, I saw a turtle. So then I started to outline the turtle and kind of paint more so that he pops out a little more. I've been, so that's another thing that I like to do is just put, put a lot of texture and pattern and color on and then discover what's there. <laughs> 